Hi, this is Gilles, Radio Prepper. If, like me, you build radio kits, uh, transceiver kits, there is one item that you really uh, should have, and that's a watt meter. And this is made by Oak Hill Research, OHR. It's the WM2 watt meter. It's a kit, and it goes only up to 10 watts, but it has a 1 watt and a 100 milliwatt scale. So this is my second one, actually, bought with my own money. <laughs> both of them <laughs> and uh, I couldn't resist uh, last night to uh, put the dial in and uh, the sticker a very thick plastic sticker it's a metallic case here's the cover so it goes like this and of course in the back you have the uh, connectors uh, UHF well it's called UHF but antenna connectors switch there is an external power. Of course it comes with a bag of components and I'll show you the uh, circuit board. It's not a very big kit, uh, it's fairly simple to build actually. Not many components as you can see, uh, it's more of a mechanical build if I can call it that. It's the same company that sells the uh, ZM2 tuner, excellent tuner that I built as a kit as well. This one doesn't have a circuit board inside, it's all uh, wired um, by hand and uh, it works really well so they have good stuff they also have transceivers believe it or not uh, I think they're monoband uh, CW transceivers and it does come with a manual sometimes you have to download manuals from other companies but this one uh, well, they give you the manual the printed manual which is kind of cool wastes a little bit of paper but it does help they even give you a power cable and that's gold nothing like a white plate for components and there aren't that many of them very clear markings on the board and that always helps you have to be very careful with the 1N34A diodes because they're made of glass and they can break very easily so when you bend the leads uh, do it very gently you know I find it a bit amusing when the manufacturer says on the manual make an inventory of your parts before you start building well no because that's your job <laughs> and I'm missing a resistor otherwise it is coming right along now there is going to be a little bit of a complex assembly here well not so complex but that's a piece of uh, coax cable going through a toroid so uh, I'm going to show you that because that's a bit peculiar and here is one spot where the board should be redesigned this trim pot here has inline pins but the board is made for a round trim pot like this one not so great so I cut uh, two and a quarter inch of coax about 57 millimeters and I'm going to cut here the insulation about 12 millimeters so half an inch from the end I'm going to be careful not to cut the shield and you can feel it when the blade touches the copper and that's what you get here now I'm going to twist the braid together and I need two of these and I removed a quarter inch of insulation here at the end uh, at the center connector we have uh, two toroids to wind and each have 12 turns and now this is one turn every time the wire goes through the core it's one turn so one two and I'm going to count to 12 nothing easier Guys, making uh, toroids is very easy. If you don't have any uh, physical impairment, uh, there's no reason why you couldn't wind a toroid if you can't count. Here we go. Pretty easy. And as usual, my preferred method is just to uh, scrape the insulation from the wires, trying not to break them. And it has happened before. So you have to be very careful when you do it like this. Some people use a lighter. Uh, I don't know, I kind of like to do it like that. So here I threaded the uh, toroid through the coax cable. Note that I cut the braid on one side. And those two toroids, by the way, have to be as identical as possible because they are going to measure forward and reverse power and compare them. Here I'm soldering the uh, toroid leads. So this is the only, uh, let's just say, out of the ordinary operation you're going to do for this kit. Everything else is very standard. Pretty nice if you ask me, well except for the missing resistor, but hopefully I'll find one. So I didn't find the resistor. 
now I have to wait, but you don't have to. And here they are, two weeks later. What I like in this kit is that everything is included, uh, even the wire. This is a multiple conductor wire, so I have to strip it. The manual even gives you the lengths and colors that you have to cut. This is when a first aid kit is a must have. Now, of course, you should never cut towards any body part, but ah, too dangerous. <laughs> Just have to pull them out. There we go. One by one. There we go. Following the instructions, I cut all the wires to length and tinned the end of, uh, well, just one end. The other end is going to go into the uh, circuit board so it shouldn't be too thick. Preparing the wires uh, it takes a very long time but it does make things much faster later. The manual is very well written so uh, this was a tedious job but pretty easy. All right, everything is soldered now. I just have to mount the PCB inside the cabinet and finish wiring. All right, it looks pretty good. I had to tweak this selector here, move it a little bit, because the screw that holds this button wouldn't align, allow aligning the markings. And so I had to move it a little bit, but it does fit fine now. So, and now the marking on the button is actually in the right position. It is finished, ready for alignment, and all you need for that is a precise voltmeter. All right, adjusting R8 to full scale. All right, so I followed the procedure. It's pretty easy. I didn't show you the whole thing because I couldn't hold the camera at the same time and I, I broke my uh, tripod here, so. Oh, well, but uh, now I just have to cut a jumper and that's it. And here's the finished product. I have plugged in a dummy load here in the back. These are SO239 connectors, of course. I wish they were BNC because, uh, you know, most QRP radios use uh, BNC connectors. That's a homemade uh, dummy load, by the way. And uh, it just happens that I have to adjust the power meter on my K1, so let's do that. All right, so I'm on the lowest band, 80 meters. Uh, they want you to change the uh, output power to five watts. Here we go. And to set the uh, ATU mode to CLP. So I'm going to do that, CLS, CLP calibrated power. Now I'm going to enter tune mode and here it shows mm, about 4.5 watts. I'm going to, uh, yep, yeah, that's the power that's actually shown here. So power 5.4. Okay, here we have five watts. It shows 6.3 there, so that's not what I want. I'm going to turn R1 until the K1 shows five watts. Here we go, 5 watts on the K1, 5 watts on the WM2, job is done. So, pretty happy about the results, it looks great, it works, uh, just like I remembered it. So I'm pretty happy to have this watt meter because of course it's very useful to get the maximum power out of your kits. Now I wish the uh, circuit board was uh, the tracers were of a little better quality, uh, no problem but you know, it, it could be better. Again, I wish that uh, it was uh, standard BNC, not SO239. Again, there is an option, but it's an extra. Uh, you can also get an LED option uh, because uh, it's kind of easy to leave the thing on and uh, drain the battery. So otherwise, it's an excellent watt meter. There is a reason why I bought a second one. <laughs> if it wasn't good, I would have uh, bought something else. WM2 QRP watt meter. Have a good one.